uh, Andreas uh, is uh, coming from Germany and uh, it was born in 1979 in Ludwigsburg, Southern Germany. After becoming a spiritual seeker in his youth already in 2009, he met Tony Parsons and his uncompromising message. First, I was shocked, but suddenly and unnoticeably, the apparent me energy seemed to have melted away. Uh, Andreas is going to do a 10 minute presentation and we're going to uh, open it up with a um, Q&A. Hello, Andreas. There we are. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm really good, so great to see you. So yeah. uh, we're going to get started right away, if, if you like, and then um, you're live right now. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Live already. Okay. Hello. Yes, we're live already. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So, so everyone, this is Andreas. Go ahead, Andreas. Hello. I wish you a good day. Nice to see you. All right. So, um, what to say about this? Basically there is no message. That's the interesting thing. There isn't anything to say really, because what happens, what apparently happens is all there is. And there is nothing separate from this. So there is no experience, so one could say. There is no one who lives an autonomous existence and all that stuff. And one could say the only seeking energy, so to speak, the only assumption that there is something to ask, something to find, something to inquire in, is coming from this separate standpoint, so to speak. But again, what this message is saying, what this apparent message is saying, is that there is no separation and that there is no separate standpoint. Very simplified spoken, one could say there just isn't anyone. There is no separation. It doesn't happen. It's a dream. It's an illusion. And when I say it's an illusion, I don't mean that there is a real illusion. It means that there just isn't anyone already, neither here, nor there, nor anyone else. Nor, nor anywhere else. In that sense, what is, what apparently happens, is everything. It's complete. It's not everything in a sense of it's all the objects, so to speak, or it's all that I'm aware of. It's everything in a sense of completion. There is nothing else to find. There is nothing else to get. And even this, so to speak, cannot be found or cannot be gotten. It's whole, it's complete. Whatever happens, whatever seems to be happening is just naturally whole and complete. But it's ungraspable, it's unfindable, it's inexperienceable because all those things, finding, grasping, experiencing, belong to the dream of separation. And as that doesn't exist, there is no grasping, no finding, no experiencing, no arriving in that. It's just timelessly itself, sitting in front of a screen, talking, listening, thinking maybe, feeling, whatever. Whatever there seems to be, it's unknowably itself. Therefore, there is no message. Therefore, there is no one to teach and no one who could teach. There is no teaching, there's nothing to get. There's absolutely nothing to get. And of course, there isn't anyone who can get this. Somebody wants to say hi, Denise. Guten Tag, Andreas. Love my time living and working in Munich, Germany. Uh, no. Here is a... <laughs> Did I say that right? Guten Tag? <laughs> yeah, quite good, actually. Denise asks, can you tell us a little bit about your journey from separation into oneness? 
Well, hmm, what should I say? Of course, as long as there was the impression that I am someone, um, there was just seeking going on. I was trying to find all kinds of things, of course, fulfillment in the end, but I thought I needed to become happy or silent or healed, um, all kinds of things. And but what happened in the last two years, or that's how I would describe my apparent death, it was rather a fading out. It was looking, looking back, I would say that it's a description. Um, I would say I had this slow fading out without really noticing it, without knowing what was going on, because I thought I'm still on a path towards something, but actually I was fading out until there was nothing left. That's basically the story that I can tell. So there wasn't a real event in the end. There wasn't really anything happening. It's, it was a bit like falling asleep over two years. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. Very unspectacular. Andreas, you said that there's no way to realize oneness because there's only oneness. Um, can you elaborate on this? Yes. Um, as I said, there just basically isn't anyone. The idea of realize, realizing and realization in a way belongs to the person and the person has the experience to, it lives in knowing, in realizing anyway. It's self-knowledge, it's self-awareness kind of, which is kind of a self, the realization that there is something which I am, one could say, energetically, it's energetic. But that's the first realization. And as there is an unfulfillment about it, comes the dream that there is more to realize, which basically is to know more, to see more, to experience more, to be aware of something else. But that's a complete dream. This whole movement, this whole apparent movement of I'm here present, realizing my presence and trying to realize more is just a dream. It's a dreamt reality. In that sense, there is nothing to realize. There is no additional realization, one could say. The person dreams of this additional realization Yes, it is as it is, but I still have to realize something that I'm one or how life works or whatever. I still need to realize something, but that's a complete dream. In that sense, there is no additional realization to what already happens. It's just, it just doesn't exist. That's the thing. It's not that one shouldn't do that. There just is no such thing. It's a complete illusion. Thank you, Andreas. That was pretty clear. Uh, Scolori asks, can you explain consciousness, please? Please. <laughs> can I explain consciousness? Not really, because there is no such thing. In the end, the function, the, there seems to be an apparent function of consciousness. But that's unknowable as well, as everything else is unknowable. So consciousness cannot be explained. It will never be explained. However, what uh, the person regards as consciousness is an experience. An experience to be something which is conscious. And that's a dream. That's an, it doesn't, uh, there is no such thing. And I can't explain that. It, there isn't a reason for why there isn't such a thing. It's just not there. So, no, I can't explain that. <laughs> Another question here. Could you describe the shift from understanding into the, strategic, the energetic shift of knowing? I'll repeat that. Could you describe the shift from understanding into this energetic shift of knowing? Well, I think I just would have different words for that. 
because in the end, the shift would be apparently from presence to absence. So it's not really from belief into knowing, because how I would say, knowing is still the dream, so to speak, as long as there is something that is known or experienced that I would regard apparently as a dream. In that sense, liberation, apparent liberation, would be the melting away of the sense to be present into absence. That's how I'm, it's, as I said, seen from the person, it's like falling asleep. The end of self-consciousness, that's liberation. But it's a story because what's being said here, or liberation in that sense is the turning out, that it never was real in the first place. So that sounds a bit illogical. I'm sorry for that. But the turning out of, oh, there is no such thing thing as a self and a self-consciousness somehow goes together with the melting away of it. To describe it, it's rather energetic, but it's a story. Thank you. Isa asked, there is nothing to do, nothing to say, nothing matters. Still, we are here doing and saying a lot as if it all matters. Do you experience existence as a very weird too in that sense? Well, in that sense, there is no one here. Maybe I know what you mean, maybe, but this experience of presence, namely that I'm now here, is an illusion. In that sense, there is no one here right now. On the other hand, what your first statement actually means is that nothing needs to happen, or how I would say it. It's not that nothing, there's speaking, apparently there is sitting in a room, there is having lunch, breakfast, there is talking to each other, which is what apparently happens, but none of that needs to happen. That's a dream that the person would attach to everything, that, some, that things need to happen, for some reason, and that in order for me to become fulfilled, something else needs to happen, my enlightenment, for example, or I don't know what. In that sense, nothing needs to be said, nothing needs to be experienced in order to become fulfilled. That's how it's meant. But yes, all there is is what apparently happens, but not because of something, not because there's a need behind anything. It's just freely itself, sitting in a room, talking to each other, thinking, feeling, whatever, everything. Next question here. Um, thank you so much for that, um, Andreas. From Dexter, how do you find motivation to move ahead in daily life? Well, that's the good news. It doesn't need motivation, really, or it doesn't need a, a motivated person. It's just absolutely happening by itself. Life, so to speak. Life is what apparently happens, which includes everything. Getting up in the morning, uh, brushing one's teeth, having breakfast, going to work or whatever. The person lives in the dream of I'm of personal motivation and intention and the need to find something else, but what's a dream? Life just happens by itself completely, but for nothing, not for anything, not in order to gain something. That's the surprise, so to speak. It's pretty unexpected from the person, so to speak, that everything happens for nothing, so to speak, but, yeah. Next question that we have is from Denise. Does the fading out process you experience require trust that the oneness is there within? Like surrendering from over-identification with the thinking mind, opening up a wider view. Also, what is your experience in life like now day to day? What does it feel like? Well, the first part, I think I 
didn't really understand. But how, as, as far as I'm concerned, this English here, I guess so, um, there, this has nothing to do with consciousness, really. It has nothing to do with coming to a wider consciousness or more clear consciousness, because consciousness itself isn't real. So you can't find fulfillment in anything, in cars, in feelings, in thoughts, in other people, but also not in consciousness. So consciousness on the one hand is what apparently happens and it's howling complete. On the other hand, it's totally empty and meaningless and it's not who we are, so to speak. There isn't anything which we are. So that was the first part. Now I forgot the second part. What was, what was that? Ah, what a, how I experience it uh, in daily life. Well, um, there just is no experience. That's the thing. And in a way, all there is, is daily life. So there isn't daily life plus me in a certain state. That's the person's experience. Like there is this normal life and then there is me feeling happy or feeling unhappy or being not enlightened or being a seeker or whatever. But it's exactly this separation which doesn't exist. So I'm not feeling in a certain way. There is no one to do so. Exactly this is the dream. So I don't know how I feel. There isn't anyone there. And as I said, all there is apparently is day-to-day -day, day -day life. There isn't anything else, just. Thank you. Uh Scolari asked, are you in deep sleep when you're awake? Am I in deep sleep when I'm awake? Yeah, one could say so, yes. Awakeness is what apparently happens, but there is nothing there which has an experience of it. That's deep sleep, so to speak. Of course, that's liberation. Absolutely. The next <laughs> one is... <laughs> David asks, we often hear the term what is or what is happening, but is there a what isn't or what isn't happening, namely all of the unseen possibilities? No, that's, uh, I know, you can't say that what is or what apparently happens or what happens and stuff, because in the end, there isn't anyone aware of any kind of happening. So there is no there is no real happening. There is, not, um, uh, there is no real processing of the idea of existence. That's the thing, it's blind. Everything is blindly itself. Not knowing anything about being existent or being non-existent. There is no this, there is no what happens. Yeah, you're right. Ben asked, hello. How do I make decisions in life with this investigation and not thinking? Thanks. <laughs> well, there just isn't anyone having to do decisions. That's the thing. Decisions happen on their own, exactly as they do. We don't speak about some mystical whatever. Um, it's quite ordinary. And of course, there can be thoughts and a decision will be made. It just doesn't need anyone to do so. That's one could say is um, an artificial struggle that the person seems to live in, that I have to consciously do life, that I have to consciously decide. That's, it's, that's an artificial struggle, so to speak. But decisions happen just by themselves in a very ordinary way. It's not special. What we talk about is not special. It's very ordinary. It's this, which includes decisions. They are apparent, of course. Thank you. This one is a long one, Andrea. Are you ready? Yeah. So your description of your coming to clarity sounds as though it was uneventful. 
just a gradual increase of the space of no one is here. Andreas did not experience excitement pleasantly or, or painfully or fear with this dropping of Andreas. Do you have any recollection of an aha moment that you can describe anything about this? Well, I mean, of course, there were all those things because, of course, there was, as you said, all kinds of feelings because they just are what, what happens. It just wasn't very extreme, so to speak. Um, that's what I meant. And in the end, there is no, there wasn't even an aha moment. Not really. Not really. I can't say so, no. It was not, a, that's the thing, it wasn't a moment. I didn't have an event. So, there wasn't even a real aha. And this is it from Rob. Oh, sorry, go ahead. It is rather, but not from a, not from processing, not from observing or from an experiential standpoint, but it was just like, okay, that's it. And there was joy about it. There was joy, apparently. All right. Here's an apparent question uh, from Rob Hearn. <laughs> the apparent effect of this message has been for me, one of an ever deepening relaxation. Physically, the body is much more comfortable and relaxed and there is a lot of peace and well-being now. Do you find that this effect is something that is common to lots of apparent people for whom this shift happens? Yes, one could say so. Yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, as I said, the person, the apparent person just live, lives in this artificial reality with, with a lot of struggle, so to speak, whether it's seeking and it's a lot about me doing it right and wrong and uh, this frustration about not finding it and stuff like that. So being a person, there's a, a great potential for stress in a way. And of course, when that drops, those symptoms of separation, so to speak, they just melt with it. Yeah, definitely. It's not that something really new comes in. It's not that a certain special kind of happiness comes in or a certain amount of bliss or something like that. No, it's just the melting away of the symptoms of separation. And what's left naturally is a certain kind of well-being, being okay. Still all kinds of feelings can happen and so-called bad things too. Um, but as I said, there's a general, it's whole. The natural reality is wholeness. And so there is a kind of, yeah, well-being maybe. Not for anyone. <laughs> awesome. Eva ask, what is humility? Humility? What is humility? I don't know, a dream. There is, it's not a state. I don't, oh, maybe I don't know the word really in English, uh, in German. It's like humble? Being humble, humble, yes, yes. Humility. Well, it's an idea, sorry. Humility to me is an idea. It, do, it doesn't need that because everything just is itself without any way to escape. If you want to have it a bit romantic in that sense, everything is totally humble, but without knowing it. Because nothing, sorry, nothing has a choice. Nothing has a, has a choice to be anything else than what it is. Clouds, trees, feelings, thoughts, bodies. No choice anywhere, so. Awesome. Paul asks, is it possible that the me pretends a state of no me and non-duality, but it, in reality, the me hides itself behind this self-deception? Well, I think at least this is thinkable. And uh, yes, I think there are quite a few me's around which 
pretend to be no me or think that no me means being in a certain state or a feeling or something like that. But it just wouldn't be what we speak about here. Theoretically, that's possible. And I guess, as I said, there are a few people who think that they are no one, but present a personal state or something. Yeah, it's possible. But it wouldn't be what we talk about here, of course. It wouldn't be liberation. Because this is not a concept. It can be seen from the person. It might be regarded as a concept. And of course, the person may have the impression that it needs to become no one and somehow tries to fake it or with best intentions, by the way. But this wouldn't be what we speak about here, really. Thank you. Before I go to the next question, Denise said, thank you, Andreas, for loving the smile and the chuckle. <laughs> and the question is, <laughs> are there still preferences? This is from an anonymous question. Um, are there still preferences? For example, do you like anyone more than anyone else? Or is there anyone that you would genuinely prefer not to be around for any reason? Another way of would be asking would be, do you feel more comfortable around certain people as opposed to others? Thanks. Oh yeah, I think it probably is like that, which in the end just is what apparently happens, to be honest. So, um, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. There just wouldn't, there just isn't a story attached really that there are people that I don't like, so to speak, because they are, they are someone who is really wrong or bad or it, it's just, it's just what apparently happens. There is no... There's no one really living in a story about that, about myself and being someone and about others being someone. So preferences happen, but on the other hand, they don't mean anything. There isn't anyone who, there isn't anyone who lives according to that, so to speak. Um, how to explain that? The person, the person would somehow live in the dream of knowing what my preferences are and the assumption that I can consciously live accordingly. So I know that I like chocolate cream on bread, so I need chocolate cream on bread to be happy. That story would just drop. So they would just be eating chocolate cream. Same with the people. It's, it's not coming from a knowing or from a known story. I don't like this one and I like this one. It's just, it would just be what happens apparently. Thank you. Now I'm craving chocolate cream. <laughs> Probably that's my main preference. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one is from And. Is there a wonder in this stateless state? A wonder? Well, yeah, not really, of course, not really, because what we talk about is very ordinary. It's this. And to me, wonder somehow sounds as if there is some kind of recognition to wonder, so to speak. And there isn't a real cognition of something. So not really. On the other hand, everything is very miraculous in its ordinariness. It's totally ordinary, but on the other hand, it's whole and complete, and it's somehow shiny. It's a bit, it's a bit shiny, everything. This one is from Ben. Maharaj talks about desire for enlightenment, giving confidence, can I say I want to know truth or God if I don't identify with the illusory self? Do you want me to repeat that? You got it. Yeah, Maharaj talks about desire for enlightenment, giving confidence. Can I say I want to know truth or God if I don't identify with the illusory self? Who? that sounds a bit, a bit theoretical for me because... Who would be the one that doesn't identify with the illusory self? So that already sounds a bit unclear to me. 
um, basically I would say there just is no real path. And of course, all that the seeker knows is seeking and trying to do something to not identify, to identify with the right thoughts, to feel certain feelings, to not think certain, certain thoughts, to come to a position of neutral observing something. But I would say they're just all part of the dream and all of those are quite futile, so to speak. So, can't really say anything about that. Oh, your, your, your microphone is turned off. Oh, sorry. Can you speak about, for Megan, sorry. Can you speak about this, nothing is happening? Well, nothing is happening isn't really known. Actually, one has to say it the other way around. The only thing which experiences happening is self-consciousness, is the me. Because the person is the experience that I'm now here. I'm something that now here happens. And in a very funny way, this experience is projected to the outside, to the apparent separate outside. And suddenly everything else also seems to be something that happens now here. That's basically the subject object reality, me and the computer, me and you, me and my life, me and the situation that I'm in, me and the room, both as experienced realities. That's happening, so to speak. That is what happening means. I'm happening, this is happening. One could also say existing. The funny thing is when this sense of existence in here drops, there is nothing anymore here which has a sense of existence in general, so to speak. In that sense, there is no existence. There is nothing which is there and could claim I am or this is real or this is happening. In that sense, nothing is happening. But there isn't anyone sitting in that being aware of that. Because then again, we would have a subject object reality and nothing happening would be another something, <laughs> would be another circumstance. Nothing happening is not a circumstance that's opposite to other circumstances. That just isn't anyone experiencing anything. The experience is illusory. I agree, thank you. Uh, this one is, uh, Andreas, was there a giving up? Um, yes, one could say so, but it wasn't that I gave up. Life gave me up, so to speak, or life gave up the illusion, but it wasn't me giving up. That, that's a, a rather arrogant idea of the person, so to speak, to be able to give up. <laughs> I, I mean, most people fail anyway. <laughs> it's impossible. The person can't give up. It can't give itself up. That's the thing. It can't give itself up. In the end, because it's not even there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what would you say to a person who gets depressed after realizing nothing matters? There is no point in anything. Yes, if there is still someone, so to speak, if there is this realization for someone, this can lead to a depression, so to speak, or to depressive moments or... Oh yeah, of course. I mean, seen from the person, it is quite depressive to be here, which is accompanied by a sense of unfulfillment and not be able to do something about that. It's still a dream, of course. It's still a phantom depression about a phantom existence, but yes. Yes. Life seems worthwhile for the person when it has a goal. When there seems to be a goal, a reachable goal, life seems to be quite okay for the seeker. But of course, if that illusion drops, but there's still someone there, 
doesn't feel very good. Uh, this is from uh, Ian. Uh, Ian asked, do you as a non-person fulfill any longer term purposes in the apparent world? <laughs> is it okay to honor a purpose? Well, the, I don't really know what you mean because there is no purpose for anything. There, there just isn't really. But I don't, don't know what you mean with the, in the first sentence. The next one is, what is the embodiment of awakening? A dream, because there is no embodiment. That's the thing. There isn't anything living in the body. And awakening isn't a personal state that needs to be embodied. So in that sense, there is no, no embodiment of that. What might happen when there is no one or when the person drops is that little by little over the years, the symptoms of seeking or the symptoms of seeking become less or drop with it. And over the years, this may reflect in the body, in the behavior and that stuff. But this is not what I would call embodiment. There is no such thing, really. Thank you. What questions and affirmations help the most? <laughs> well, the, the dilemma is that nothing helps because the whole, uh, this whole idea is the dream, namely that I am someone, that here is something that is separate from everything else and that I'm on a path towards fulfillment and that I, on that path, need to do something. That's a dream. That whole thing does not exist. So uh, there is no answer. This, this has nothing to do with becoming a happy me, because it's, it's being said that there is no me. There isn't anyone. So the question about what you should do or about what anyone should do remains unanswered. There is no answer to this question. I know there, <laughs> there might be a lot of good ideas about what you should do, but they are all dream answers. This one goes, uh, so how, an anonymous question, so how to stop seeking? After so many years of seeking, I just don't understand how all of this can be true. Well, I, I, in the end, you can't stop seeking because it's not true. That's, that's the thing. There is no seeker. There is no real seeking. There isn't anyone to stop. That's the problem. It's not a problem, but seeing from a person, this would be the problem. That seeking is what apparently happens as long as it happens. And experiencing oneself as someone is what apparently happens as long it is, as it is what apparently happens. And there isn't anyone doing it. So there isn't anyone having any choice about what seems to be happening. You can't stop seeking because there is no you to do so. Anonymous question. Everyone who is awake says that the same thing but it all sounds not possible to say that there is nobody here, etc. But I, I am drawn to it, yet do not experience it. So frustrating. Mm, yeah, I understand. I understand. But this is basically the, the person's frustration, which it has all anyway, because to be here now is seeking. It feels as if something is missing, and it feels as if the answer is over there. The answer is somehow separate from me. So whatever it is, I have to become enlightened. I have to become a no me, whatever. Yeah, I just, I want to say something else also. Yes, but that's what it is. It's apparently frustrating to be someone. Absolutely. But on the other hand, it will never have, it's way to, to wait until you, as a me, experience no me, 
it's again waiting for something that doesn't exist. Because what we speak about is not an experience, or the experience is illusory. So this will never happen. That's what the person thinks, that liberation or fulfillment or enlightenment is when I am here and can honestly and consciously say, I am no me, or there is no me. But this will not happen. This does not exist. Because it's exactly the one who wants to say that, which doesn't have any reality at all. So there is no one, is not a state where someone will arrive in. It's impossible. It's not a state. There just isn't anyone already. Thank you. And Teller um, asked, what about physical pain, Andreas? How would, you fee how would that feel if you had a serious accident, if there's no one there? Well, it would just feel as it feels. So in the end, there is no answer to anything. And there's also no answer to pain. What is pain? What to do with pain? It would very probably be painful. <laughs> That's just what pain apparently does, being painful, so to speak. And apparently there would be some reaction to it, taking medicine or whatever. For no one, this would happen for no one. Pain, lying in bed and complaining or whatever. Thank you. Michael asks, how did this shift in perspective, perspective change your nighttime dreams? Oh, that's hard to say because they didn't really change much, actually. And I hardly remembered my dreams all my life, actually. So they never played a big role in my life. And so they don't do now. Sometimes I remember something, but it's not. Not very different, actually. I mean, nothing is very different to before. That's the interesting thing. In a way, it is a dream of the person, or I dreamt that there is something else which will fulfill me, another state, another something. And I thought, whatever it is, it must be very different. That's what I thought. It can't be how it is now, so it must be different. But the surprise was that that was the only dream, that there is something else which will fulfill me, something different. But there never is something different. That's the thing. There never is anything else than what apparently happens. In that sense, nothing is really different now. It's just what dropped is the dream that I'm separate and that there has to be something different. In that sense, a lot of things didn't change. Most of them didn't change. Thank you, Andreas. Um, ben asks, so what did you do to progress to the state that you are in? <laughs> well, I didn't do anything for that. That's the problem. Because all I was doing, or all I thought I was doing, were, was in order to be there and experience happiness. So nothing of what I thought that I'm doing led to my end. All I was doing was in order to be alive and experience happiness. And in a very funny way, my end, my death, happened despite of me wanting to be alive, because that's basically what the person wants, which is totally okay, and basically what the person intends also in seeking. Of course, I do something, I do meditate, I don't know, whatever, and in order to be there afterwards and experience the peace. I do self-inquiry in order to know that there is no one and be there afterwards and know that. So all techniques are actually in order to 
be here. They are just a personal thing. It's a dream that seeking leads to the end of seeking. Or in the other way around, what we speak about here is just the end of seeking for no reason. It's the end of the seeker, sudden, unexpected, for no reason. There is no finding in that. There is no arriving or realizing of anything. It's not the successful, liberation is not the successful end of a seeker's career. Thank you, Andreas. Um, is, if Anonymous asks, if, if everyone is dream, then what the hell are we doing here? <laughs> exactly. There is no answer because no one is doing anything here. It's just happening for no reason. There isn't anyone there who's doing it and there isn't anyone here who could prevent it from happening. It's just what apparently happens for no one. The person, when there is the sense of a person, there might be the assumption that we are doing something in order to get something, in order to come to a result. No, it's not happening. That is not happening. There isn't anyone. Uh, Sheens asks, so is everything on autopilot? Yes, one could say so. Absolutely, yes. But, except that there is no real happening even. So it's not that there is a real happening which is on, autopi on autopilot, which moves forward in time. But yes, there isn't anything doing anything. No person, no ego, no God, no divine energy, no devil, no whatever. It's just what apparently happens. Out of, totally out of control, but it's not going anywhere. So, yes. Thank you, Andres. This one is a, a follow-up question, I guess, from Anonymous. Uh, what would you call that? You said that there's no embodiment, but ended your answer by saying that there is. You wouldn't call embod embodiment. So what do you call it? Or what have you called? Or what have you called? Are you pointing to just being what is? Yes, exactly. It would be another story. Also, what I described was a story. It, is, it, it also would be what apparently happens. There is just no real hap ongoing happening and there is no process, neither before liberation, so to speak, nor after liberation. There just is what apparently happens. But this could, for example, also be a softening of traumas, for example, because there is no one anymore keeping them up, something like that. But this too would just be what apparently happens for no one without direction and meaning and stuff like that. Thank you, Andreas. Can addiction still happen after liberation? Um, well, at least it can go on, I would say. I don't know if, it, it, if there can be a new addiction. I don't know, maybe theoretically, it's thinkable, I just don't know. But at least it could go on after liberation. Yeah, maybe it would soften over the decades or drop overnight, but it doesn't have to. So yes. Are you aware, this is from Anonymous, an anonymous question, are you aware of the three state of consciousness always? If I know, I'm not aware, of course. Awareness is the dream. So uh, there is no awareness. There's no real awareness about anything. Or well, there is no experience of, to be something which is aware. Stephen asks, how do you understand you, your identity, sorry, now that it's no longer identified with the separate self? Did it change the way you relate to others or the patterns remain the, name, the same in relating? 
Well, it's both a bit. Uh, on, on the one hand, I don't understand myself at all, so to speak. There may be all kinds of ideas about my stuff, my, how I am and functioning, or about my functioning, so to speak. But there isn't anyone believing in them, one could say. So I have no clue how I am and how I function. And on the one hand, one could say the apparent relating, because there isn't anything here anymore which relates really, or which lives in the experience of relating. So the apparent relating is on the one hand quite the same, on the other hand, it feels as if it's a bit less traumatized in a way. How to explain that? What, 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 um, well, the certain neurosis became less. It's just the, per the person's stuff. I mean, when there's a person, there's always the dream of, I have to do relationship. I have to behave. And there is always a subtle ga uh, gaming going on, a uh, bargaining, trading with the other person. So, and that drops, that energetic setup drops to the need to behave in a certain way. I mean, there is still stored behavior and conditioned behavior and all that stuff, but the need, the belief in the need to behave in a certain way drops. And somehow this also reflects back in the behavior, apparently. But it's very meaningless. It's very subtle and meaningless and just is what apparently happens. It's not a big thing. Next question is, you say that nothing really changes when the me drops. I experienced that what I perceive as a lot of pain emotionally and physically because of this seeking. Can it be? that when the end of the seeking drops, the pain drop? Yes, that's the thing. <clears throat> so what one could say, the pain that seems to come out of seeking, that drops with it, of course. And in a way, one could say this is a major, this is a big change. On the other hand, there is, there is just nothing there anymore, which, which is a reference point and would know what a lot of pain is and what less pain is, so to speak. But yes, this dreamt pain, so to speak, that comes from being a person, of course, that drops together with being a person. Of course, yeah. That's what I meant before, like the frustration coming out of not finding wholeness, guilt feelings about not doing it right, and all those things, of course, they drop. Yes. Thank you, Andreas. This is from Ben. So what was the self-inquiry to do? What was the self-inquiry do did as an illusory self before you realized you are no one? Did you get that? Uh, the question is basically what I did, what I practiced, so to speak. Well, I was all kinds of things, basically. I mean, I was... For most of the time, I was a spiritual seeker. I was seeking in spirituality. And I basically met all kinds of concepts over the years, so to speak. Um, I was more or less involved in them. I was very involved in seeking, but I wasn't really involved into one certain method for a long time. It was basically a mixture of being in the moment, be aware, a bit of healing, um, all those things, I guess, the, I guess you know them all in a way. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess one evening I even participated in angel meditation and stuff like that. But basically, I wanted to be happy, a happy person, blissful, actually. And I tried all kinds of things to be that. Thank you, Andreas. We have five minutes left and we have tons more of questions here. Don't worry. Um, hopefully we'll get to do another interview, Andreas, and I'll try to answer, you know, ask these questions. Yeah. Um, there's so many questions. Um, ben asked, what books did you read? Again? Uh, what did I read? Yeah. Uh, another disappointing answer. I wasn't a big reader. 
<laughs> so I read a few books, of course. I mean, most of them were spiritual. I, was, I wasn't into non-duality for a long time, I have to say. Um, so I hardly read any non-dual non books, um, probably from Tony a bit, but also not too much, actually. And um, of course, some spiritual books, but not too much, actually. And nothing that I could really suggest now, because this really has nothing to do with spirituality, so to speak. So I'm sorry. This one is from Isa. People sometimes get very upset when you say this is just what happens with a smile. Especially now, lots of people feel challenged. They call it spiritual bypassing. How do you respond to this? Well, I can't because it's true. You can't really say this to anyone. That's the thing. It's not an answer. This is all there is, is not an answer. So in a way, of course, people do get upset by that because they think that's an answer that this sentence is supposed to cut through the seeking or end their suffering or, you know, someone is sad and you say, well, that's just what apparently happens. It's just, it's true. It is what apparently happens, but for someone, for, for people who look for an answer, this sounds a bit, this doesn't work. So, they're looking for something and they're looking for an answer. Or maybe you try to give it as an answer, but it doesn't answer anything. It's not, an, it's not a very clever answer to, some, to seeking. A couple more questions here, Andreas. This one is from Victor. You say you use apparent a lot, but apparent to who if you say we are not? Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's an apparent description, but there is no one aware of things being apparent. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Yes. So apparent cannot be realized. <laughs> Last question here. I'm going to a Christian roulette here. Um, <laughs> are there any qualities to the experience of being a separate person? missed or longed for when liberation is seen? Is there sadness at the loss of that person? Hmm, I don't, I'm not sure if I got the first part. I mean, the thing is that the, the very funny thing is that it turns out in the end, so to speak, it turns out that there never was a real person. It just was never there. And all of it, all of what seemed to have been personal, even including the suffering and the seeking, was just what apparently happened. And it was whole and complete all the time, so to speak. All the time there wasn't anyone. And all the time it was whole and complete. It was, it's unexplainable. I can't explain that. It's an utter surprise. It's an utter surprise to no one I know. So, and um, in the end, that's why there wasn't a real sadness because there was no one there dying. There wasn't, uh, one could say before that, there can be sadness when the person gets a bit um, melancholic about its life and death and not finding it. There can be sadness. It can also be a kind of a let go of life. It can feel like that, of course, but it would still be all part of the dream that there is someone alive in the first place with their just isn't. But it's not letting go of something. It's not that something really goes away. It wasn't there. Or one could say it was wholeness all the time. What happened was wholeness all the time. There's nothing to be sad about. Well, thank you, Andreas, um, for your time. And uh, I know, you, are you in Greece right now? Yes, exactly. That's why I'm a bit sweating. I'm still here. You look yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll chat again soon. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we are going to close the uh, uh, Andreas webinar right now.
please go back to the home event uh, base in about 15 minutes. You can sign back in. We have Rebecca coming, Rebecca Maroon coming up next. And we have a great program. We have, I think, like 10 more hours of this today. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Andreas. And we'll see all of you back in 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Take care. Bye. Have a good Goodbye. day. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.